Hi everyone, my name is Luis Alejandro Gonzalez. I am a swimming coach and a triathlon coach. This is my beautiful face beside my mentor and her coach, Hector Ben Sosa, an Olympic coach. Um, this is, was the day that I moved here to Ireland in our lovely pool in Argentina. This is part of my history. I work all my life with open water swimmers, formal swimmers in long and short distance pool, and especially with young people, uh, amateur triathletes. This is part of the national junior selection that I was her coach for three years in my country. Today, uh, I will try with this video to close all the series about the principles of training and I will try to show in this video uh, that I did for the Kinside Triathlon Club the, uh, a year ago, more or less. I don't remember very well, um, but I think this presentation um, can show all the theory and the methodology that we were speaking in the article that I wrote um, for all of you and the podcast too that I was recording. The idea of this presentation is to put in practice in the planification process all the idea that we was developing in, in the last five articles and podcasts, yes? Uh, to close the circle. We start with a simple question. Why systemic decide our training? Uh, you can see that I will use a lot of phrases from Alan Cousin because he's a coach who studied very, very, very well all the process of adaptation in sport training. According to him, continual random actions are not the way to make progress toward your goals. In red, learn and focus. Why? We have to ask ourselves as a coaches and as uh, athletes, we have to follow systematic or random stimulation. Yes, what is the main difference? With a systematic stimulation, we can try to get a final result. We try to systematic all the answer of our body, uh, follow uh, an idea and a, a different stimulus to get the best result at the end of the main competition. But when we're training in a random way, we, it's very difficult really to know what will be the result of the final result when we prepare a special brace for all of us. Yes, a very important principle, creating the space in your lives to train more is more important actually to train more. Even if you don't use it for training, you will surprise yourself with the direct fitness benefit that having more time and space to properly recover brings. And I will repeat this special concept, creating space in your life to training is more important actually than training more. A bit of simple equation, cows per cows is equal to, we don't know, because we don't know uh, what uh, I do. I don't know why I do it. And I don't know how many times I can do it. Yes, I don't know anything in, in short. But systematic per objective is equal to result. I know what I do. I know why I do it. And I know how many times I can do it because I have a process. I follow a process. This is from Alan Cousin too, a general volume for triathletes in hours. Yes, uh, I put this here in this part because I am not interested in this presentation to speak about TTS um, and about 
specific to uh, um, about a specific training load. I am more interested now in simple numbers to show how the principle of progress can help us to get our result in a good way. Yes. Uh, in general, you can see here that the annual hour, that means the hours in a year, is necessary for uh, finish a uh, different distance in triathlon. For instance, for juniors, around 200 or 350 hours per year is equal more or less to training five to eight, almost nine hours per week. For the sprint distance between 300 to 500 is equal to training about eight to 12 hours per week. For Olympic distance between 400 to 600 hours is equal to training 10 to 15 hours per week. For high Ironman 500 to 700 hours uh, for Ironman between 600 to 1,200 hours is equal to training 15 to 30 hours per week. And this is very important in the moment that we have to test or organize thinking about the level of every athlete and the main goal that they want to get. Gabriel de la Macha for AGMT2 human performance, create this graphic. Um, for me, uh, this infographic is very, very clear about the objective at the time that you need to get the next step in your performance. Let's talk about, uh, okay, a very simple example. For instance, in the first step, I will train in to get uh, a good time in five to 10 kilometers. After that, I move to the next level to this distance, then this distance, then 15 to 21 kilometers. And finally, we can start to training for a marathon, a half marathon, a marathon properly, looking for a good performance. It's the same, exactly the same uh, for triathlon. First, we train for sprint and short distance, then for short to Olympic distance, then to Olympic to half Ironman, and from the half Ironman Olympic to the full Ironman. Don't try to short steps. We have to follow a methodology, uh, the principle of progress to get the new level and try to avoid injuries, to gain experience, and the most important, to enjoy the process. Yes, the natural progression say that. First, we need to train in more or less 15 months to in this distance. Then we need 15 months more to compete in this distance. Then 15 months more to go to this distance and finally 15 months more to work in this distance. That means you will need more or less five years from here to here to have a safe way and a safe road up to start to training seriously for this distance. I know that many of you um, have the ambition and the illusion, uh, the illusion of run this for your first formal race or this for your first formal race. But my advice, um, under my experience, this is the best way to build and have your career. Now, let's uh, talk about the first example. Yes, imagine that we start here to training and progressing in that 15 months, we will move from this number of hours to this number of hours, to this number of hours per week, up to this number of hours per week. Yeah, this is a very, very simple example. Uh, Monday, we have a day off. Tuesday, 
we swim to thousand meters, more or less an hour. Uh, Wednesday, we rode two hours. Thursday, we swim again. Friday, we run. Saturday, we go bike again, and then we finish running again. That's two stimulus every segment of the race between more or less seven to 12 hours per week. Yes, moving from here up to here. The next step for intermediate level means that we increase the hours and the intensity every week can be, and remember this is just an example, please remember this is just an example. You don't have to copy exactly that I wrote here in this presentation. You go for a bike an hour and a half and then swim three thousand meters. The next day you run, go again for a bike and then swim again. We have a day off for recovery. Thursday, Friday, we train in again two times and then increase the volume Saturday and Sunday. Yes, we follow the principle of progression here. And we have an, a switch between volume and intensity, volume and intensity, volume and intensity. More or less 13 hours per week. Skill improvement. For me, this follow this process of more or less 15 months for every distance, I repeat, follow this way to improve your skill, your ability, etc., etc., etc. I love you to develop the, these skills, experience, habits, confidence, and the most important point, psychological and mental adaptation for all the distance. Again, Alan Cousin said to us, too much is made of mental toughness as a shortcut. Real mental toughness is the opposite, passions and humility. Keep showing up, know where you are and what you can realistically expect. Don't screw it up by doing dumb stuff, stuff beyond your current fitness. That means that we have to do that we have to do with the level that we have in this moment. No, don't try to do crazy things if you don't have the experience and the fitness for that. Now, moving to the next level, to the Olympic distance. This is a very simple example for intermediate level. If you can see here, uh, this athlete completes uh, almost 13 hours uh, during the week. Um, follow this distribution, yes? Uh, swimming Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, more or less 3,700 meters, 3,500 meters, and 3,600 meters. Uh, going to the gym twice per week to develop stretch, uh, avoid injuries, running three times every week, yes? Uh, in this case, uh, he runs just two because it uh, was a very um, low volume week for him. Um, and riding twice per week too, because uh, I repeat, it was a very low volume week for him. Again, we follow this way, yes. In every step, we have to feel confidence to develop new habits, to gain experience, um, to develop the psychological and mental adaptations too. Every step from the more short distance to the full distance needs to develop this skill again and again and again and do this better, better and better. Moving to the next step, the high Ironman between 500 to 700 hours in, in a year, 
between this volume every week. This is a very simple example for intermediate levels. As you can see, um, he did almost 15 hours uh, per week in this case. As you can see here, it's the same void that we that I show in the slide before. Stream three times every week. In this case, he swing, he changed the the moment that swim for problems in the week organization, especially with the uh, work hours uh, in his job. He swung here, here, and here. Yes, uh, do a very, very intensive workout on, on a bike Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. As you can see uh, here, um, we work in a time trial workout. Continue keeping the strength uh, sessions and run three, four times. Was this uh, this uh, workout was a duathlon because uh, we was prepare a, a, a very specific race in that moment. Again, in this level, you had to develop and perfection it again these skills. Um, move now, move up to the next level when we prepare the Ironman working and thinking in these annual hours and working and thinking this annual, um, sorry, uh, this week hours of training. This is a typical week for, high, uh, for full Ironman uh, for an intermediate level, yes, around 22, around almost 23 hours per week. If you can see um, the volume and the intensity is very, very, very high. And this is the only way to get the best results. If you can see, uh, follow Alan Corsi uh, graphic two, the number of corner qualification in, uh, in the training, yes, training around two, half to three hours per per day uh, up to three hours to four hours every day that means between 20 to 25 hours every week this is the only way to qualify for Kona I repeat this is the only way and you, you can say Okay, but that's just hours uh, it doesn't explain what is the intensity and the dynamic of the training law, exactly. The dynamic of the training law is here. You need a lot of aerobic base to support this amount of intensity in every week. Now, uh, we will do a close look uh, to the micro cycle. This graphic represents three years of training up to be able to run in a full Ironman distance. Yes, here for the pandemic, the volume uh, got slow. Yes, and I know this is a very controversial idea, but believe me, it's true. The fitter you get, the more quickly performance the client with the time off. And so all the more concomitant to consistency you must become. That means that more level you have, more consistency you have to training. It is no easy maintenance when it comes to endurance training. As Albrecht, a very famous swimming coach say, the moment you stop, you drop. Exactly. If you haven't built it much, you have less to lose. It's a slow streak rather than the massive leg. That means that if you are the typical athletes, and I want to be clear in this point, that training in a random way, 
you have less to lose. But if you are a consistency athlete who train every day to improve your or skills and your aerobic base and your speed and your strength and all your knowledge about the race, you have to be very, very consistent because it's the only way to get results in the future. Taking this graphic, taking this graphic in our mind and thinking in how to increase the volume, the effects of aerobic training are delayed. This made that the first two months of the system's very tone. It is common to be putting in the work but getting slower. Keep the faith. The result of the work you are putting in will show in the months ahead. That means that when you work in recover your aerobic base, the improvements are very, very, very slow in the beginning, more or less the first two months. After that two months, and in my experience, three months, honestly, uh, you start to get fast every day, every day, every day, up to get your best form for competition, yes? We did in this year, more focus in the volume more than the intensity because the main rate for us can hear the Mar de Plata full Ironman. Other important idea that we develop in our articles is this. Four weeks of the retraining after one week of the training is that you need to recover and quickly get again your fitness level. The key of everything is the consistency. Remember, consistency. And that was the result. He got the third place in the general classification in this Ironman. He got his personal vest. Uh, he won the place for Kona for the present year. Consistency, again, is the key of everything. You always have to remember the quality of the process never occurs spontaneously. You need to know where you are going, how you want to go and adopt all why. Because if you don't know why you are doing things, it's impossible to understand all the process and it's impossible to be consistent. Thank you very much. And I hope this presentation helped you to have a general look of what you have to do in the process and especially to enjoy the process. See you the next presentation. And I hope that all these article, postcard, and presentation help you to understand better your own training process. Remember that you can find more material like this in our website, agtraining.com, uh, where you can find online training service, meetings, articles, podcasts, and all the things that you need to, for improve your training process. Thank you so much. My name is Luis Alejandro Gonzalez. It was a pleasure for me to introduce to the training theory and methodology. See you next class.